right welcome welcome to the stream welcome everybody hello hello and welcome to season two of invite sent i am so excited we're having lots of fun getting everything set up right now for decentraland I i'm pumped because this is the metaverse and this is season two and the sp most specialist of all specialist guests I have on the show today as we are streaming on multiple platforms today we are streaming on twitter facebook twitch youtube linkedin and our friends at guild ritual motion thank you so much for being here please in the chat feel free to say anything everything hello i've got a couple people already saying what's up we've got um louise diaz excited to join the conversation uh some other people here for the chat. Hilda Lopez, hello, thank you for blessings. Yes, good to see you as well. Karen, hello, how are you? Great, we're getting rolling. This is fun. I, I'm trying to find Marcus here in uh, Decentraland, and we're going to jump in and bring him into the conversation. Uh, Mr. Marcus Esports, Howard, how are you today, sir? I'm good, man. Thank you for the opportunity. I know it's been a while since we caught up. Uh, mm -hmm. Welcome everybody to the show. We've definitely got some great conversation for you, and hopefully, Bob and I will be able to find each other here in the metaverse. <laughs> it's like a lost puppy, a grocery store, a lost child. I, I, you just this is massive. <laughs> I think I think I found it. I think I found it. I'm gonna go in a second, but if I go in, the music will go crazy. So I'm gonna wait a second. So yes. Marcus Esports Howard, you, you know, you, I met you, you used to be blockchain Howard. And what was that? What was that change? What, 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 what spawned that change for you before we get rolling? Great question. So uh, the reason I actually set my middle name to blockchain, it was actually just kind of a, a parody, a spoof of what was happening in the blockchain ecosystem uh -huh. circa like 2016, 2017. Uh, ICOs, initial coin offerings, kind of like when a, a stock goes public, they were happening. Uh -huh. And and because like very similar to what we're seeing in the NFT space now, everybody was trying to jump in. And one company, I think in New Jersey was a, a uh, iced tea company. They ended up like updating their business name to uh -huh. Long Island blockchain iced tea or something. Yeah. They wanted to cash in on the craze and their stock like spiked because everybody, no one knew what blockchain was, but everybody knew it was happening and important. Ultimately the SEC, I think actually delisted their, um, the, they listed their, their stock from the stock exchange. But as, as my colleagues and I were talking about the space and how much like hype was happening, we mm -hmm. said, you know, let's try that ourselves. Like, like let's add blockchain to our names and see what happens on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I just started getting like all this, this inbound business opportunity, unsolicited yeah. business opportunity around blockchain. Now, granted, like I have been in the space for over 10 years, been really following uh, Bitcoin since it launched on my birthday, January 3rd, 2009. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I did not have that kind of success that I had until after I shifted to blockchain. And then the reason I shifted to esports is, as you know, I work in the esports space now. Mm -hmm. uh, my team was saying it's it's difficult for people who approach you. You're talking about esports, but when they meet you, you know, your middle name is blockchain. So there's a disconnect. <laughs> so they suggested that I switch from blockchain to esports. And well, here we mm -hmm. are. I love it. 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 Awesome, man. Well, let's jump in here. Let's get into uh, the metaverse. As I see all these people, Karen is saying hello. She loves the esports book, by the way. I'm, I, I love the esports book as well. So thank you for putting that together. But hey, we are in the metaverse. Okay, so I, you can't see my screen right now, but if you want to pull up the live stream, you can. But um, okay, let me see. If I, I, I am and no need to if you don't want to. Uh, I'm gonna find you. You said you were at negative 109. Here, I'm, I'm actually gonna go to one of the tables, table 11, okay. Oh, uh, okay. the Texas Hold'em table. If I can get the in, 10 and 20. I don't think I have any money in here. So this is why is it? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to get in, and it says uh, I need hey, to have a wearable. Louise and, and to Karen and everybody who supported the book. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate everybody helping make that a success. Um, I won't be getting a space yacht anytime soon, but the, the book <laughs> is really profitable and everyone seems to appreciate and, and, and understand the value and the vision that I had for the book. So thank you all for your mm -hmm. continued support. So I'm only seeing eight tables, by the way. Uh, eight okay. tables. Uh, so I, I 
12. What, what number are you at? I'll meet you. What I'm not any, I can't get in because I don't, I have to like, uh, in order to sit, you must have a get ice wearable. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, uh, I'll just I'll just leave. Now I'm up in the sky. I'm up in the sky for some reason. You're in the sky. In the air. I'm going to move myself. Okay, so there's so there's different. There's ice, deck lounge, ice poker stronghold, ice Osiris. Osiris is where I'm at. Okay, I'm gonna go outside. So this is the meta. This is Decentraland. Uh, everyone who is uh, tuning in. And uh, we are doing our best. So I am at negative 107, 133, which should be negative close to you. That's a way to like teleport. Wait, wait, oh, wait, wait. I think I found you. I'm on the first floor now. All right, okay. negative three, table 11. Okay, I'm at table 11. Are you? <laughs> I left, but I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. <laughs> I'm standing right outside I table lost 11. Puppy <laughs> mm. So we are in the central land. This. I, what I want to really learn today, uh, Louise, yes, the, the he says your book is great. Yes, thank you, Louise. It is great. Um, what I really want to learn today is what the heck the metaverse is because I, I lean on your expertise to understanding what the metaverse is because I have no idea how to explain it best, but I know you, you, uh, I, I lean towards you to be the best expert in all this stuff and in this space. So, um, why you're coming to me, uh, in, and, and you're, you're at table 11, right? I'm at table 11. I'm, are you peg? Uh, what's your name? Pega something. I just got like a, a That's demo me. account. I'm, I uh, yeah, I'm the, I'm the one with the orange, uh, mohawk behind you. Yeah. This is me. Uh, can you see me? I can't see you, but if you okay. can see me, that's close enough. I can see you. Let me see if I can view. How do I, uh, can I friend you? <laughs> so I have a guest account. So, so funny story. Again, I've been in the uh -huh. space over 10 years. I actually don't know the password to my mm. blockchain, my MetaMask mm. wallet. And uh -huh. I also hope uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't have my, my uh, seed phrase. So I'm trying to remember what it was you know, <laughs> earlier on in the year. And I was like yeah. in this space, like breathing it for, for 90 days. And then when that stopped and I needed to, get the bills paid uh i yeah. started picking up the projects and so now i've stepped away from it i i have an idea of what the password is but i've got to <laughs> figure out the right combination long story short i didn't have the ability to log into decentraland with my wallet so oh i see a guest account, i see which i see is why you don't see my name makes sense so i just typed hello in the chat maybe i wonder if so oh, i can't I see it. I see it. Okay, okay i came i came outside i came outside so i went directly away uh so if you so walk walk backwards walk uh, turn around and walk straight out. Uh huh. Okay, uh -huh. Oh, you're dancing right now. You're dancing. Oh, I thought I was typing, but apparently I'm dancing. <laughs> right. Yeah, I see you. Say hello. All right. So come keep coming this way. Go straight. Keep coming. I'm going outside of the road. I'm on, I'm going off the road. Maybe because Why are you not rendering your character. That's, that's interesting because I can see a bunch of other characters and yeah. I, obviously I saw you typed, but I do I don't see your. Yeah, keep coming to the road. Keep coming to the road. Maybe you have to okay. come out of that right, area. I'll just keep walking. Maybe we're mm, 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 mm. gonna jump. We're jumping. <laughs> jumping. Okay, stay right there. Stay right there. Okay. All right. All right. Now. So while wanna... while, while mm -hmm. yes, you please. Back to each other. So the metaverse. Mm -hmm. is, Listen up, I everyone. Believe, Listen. Collection. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I just want people to listen, and I want to also. I'm glad this is recording, so I can also re-listen to what you're saying. So go ahead. What is the metaverse? So the metaverse is a collection of virtual worlds, right? It's, it's either social experiences, e-commerce experiences, um, interactive experiences. It can be either uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, anything basically digital, right? Including a computer uh, experience and video games. Uh, you know, I, when I, I heard the metaverse become super popular when Facebook became meta, I started to roll my eyes. A lot of you know other gamers that I know, you know, I think you and, and certainly everyone else on the Equal Life podcast started to roll their eyes because we've all been, you know, existing in the metaverse for decades. I would say that probably Second Life mm -hmm. is like the first mm -hmm. true metaverse, but even as far back as you know, playing Call of Duty as soon as like consoles were were connected or or World of Warcraft, those are all technically part of the metaverse. The mm -hmm. metaverse, I think, is a larger collection of instances of like 
virtual experiences to include the internet, just like the internet is a collection of websites, right? I believe the internet as a singular object is a subset of the metaverse, which is again, this virtual ecosystem or a combination of like virtual and, and in real life ecosystem. Think about Ready Player One is the easiest way to yeah, see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I love it. I love Ready Player One. So this, this Decentraland is a metaverse in itself, but the metaverse would include like Roblox and mm. Sandbox. And again, like uh, Knockout City, anything that's mm. virtual, you know, either connected to a computer or, or if you've got uh, glasses with augmented reality, you know, Google goggles or whatever, mm-hmm. each of those is a piece of the larger metaverse. Okay. Okay. I'm following, I'm following. And so that that's the that's the biggest thing I think when uh, yeah, I tell my I told my wife, "Hey, I'm going to go do an interview in the metaverse today." I have no idea what that means, honey. She already has no idea what I what I do anyways. <laughs> I don't even I don't I don't know sometimes either. But ideally ideally I've looked at it as the metaverse has really been what you said. Yes. Uh, pretty much any game where there's been interaction, I the social media as part of the metaverse, right? I, I'm mm-hmm. I'm learning and but when what is a better way for saying uh, decentraland? Decentraland is a part of the metaverse. In what what category would you what category would you stick? You, you stick Twitter in social media of the metaverse, right? Mm-hmm. Is that the better okay? So. And you stick World of Warcraft in a gaming space in the metaverse and Roblox. Mm-hmm. Uh, now with this Decentraland, where would you stick that in what category? Uh, somewhere between like digital twin and virtual society mm-hmm. or virtual community. Okay. Because it's like very that. clearly like game based, right? These are clearly like video game models and and in, in it, you're playing video games, but what they're trying to do is create in Second Life again is like a textbook example. That's why they called it Second uh-huh. Life. It was like a second world uh, where you have your own economies, products, services, people making a living creating virtual items. Right. Um, you know, there's a, a, a guy we had the event last year for the Beyond Meta event. He was showing uh, us he made like this with limited this- edition. People make a uh, set of like sneakers, and you've mm-hmm. seen like when you create your character, there's not a whole lot of uh, clothing items like in the base configuration but if you yep. go into the marketplace like people are going and they're making a living creating these virtual items even when we had the event last year like right. i paid someone us dollars for mm-hmm. them to give us let us rent basically virtual space within the central land and they built out the conference center where we had our conference okay. just like yeah. i would do the same that. in real life right like mm-hmm. you know you, you've produced and, and attended several events like that exact same experience happened here in this virtual world. <laughs> okay, I love it. Well, we've got some good conversation in the chat going on, especially on LinkedIn. Uh, Ty Medcali is really giving good info, it looks like, layers of the internet. That's a cool way to put it. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, difference, the, the difference with Web3 is the ability to hide your identification by cryptographic numbers. I, I understand that. Those cryptographic numbers identify the individual is the is a individual, okay? Oh, yes. What's up, Christopher Turner? I do wear a mohawk. Um, Yes, player one. People, I think people understand. I feel, so when did the word metaverse come about? Because when I look at Ready Player One, we weren't, when the book came out, when the movie came out, we weren't using that terminology when, when I think most of us who were like, hey, I'm going to the metaverse today, which is Decentraland. As where I, okay. I think the kind of first level of, of understanding, like, oh, I'm going to the metaverse, so I'm going to go walk around in the metaverse. And I, chapter five, at the end of chapter five in Ready Player One, I'm actually going to make a clip of it later this week where uh, he talks about, this is what Oasis, the Oasis goggles did for uh, the world and how people now live in there and they can be whoever they want and they can be whatever character, which we had Obviously, since Second Life and many other games before that, did you ever watch The Office? Ever watch the Office? I'm not a big Office fan. Mm-hmm. I've seen like a handful of clips, and and apparently, <laughs> I'm missing out. But I, I haven't. I haven't watched a bunch of that. There's definitely a Second Life part in there where one of the characters, White Shrew, is living in Second Life, but he's an actual. He's he's so in real life, he's actual paper salesman, but he goes and does Second Life and is an actual paper salesman. 
So it's very sad for him. <laughs> but anyways, um, where, when did the word metaverse come about? You know, I don't know the exact timing. I think you, you can check, you know, you can do a Google word search on like the, mm -hmm. the, the number of times that a, a word's been Googled. And so while I don't know that, I, I would assume like people started generally speaking about the metaverse uh, when Facebook became meta. You know, when yeah. we we had our event last year, I don't even think we were really using the term metaverse. Oh, we were wow. just saying we're going to be in Decentraland. Or maybe yeah. we did use the term metaverse, but like it, it wasn't popular, just like, you know, blockchain and, and crypto mm -hmm. didn't really become popular, mainstream popular until NBA Top Shot created those moments and then NFT became popular. And then like, for example, like play to earn yeah. is a new term. Yeah, again, I've been in this space over 10 years. When I, I started evangelizing for the blockchain, like publicly in like 2016, 2017, mm -hmm. and saw the opportunity that we now are, are living in now, um, I refer to it as blockchain games, just like you would say like console gaming or or okay. uh, web gaming, right? Like browser gaming. No one was using the term play to earn. So yeah. I think like the metaverse, even though we all know it existed and have been interacting mm -hmm. with it, did not become like a, a uh, buzzword, if you will, until Facebook became meta. I love it. I love it. Well, there's plenty of people right now on LinkedIn definitely loving this conversation. Uh, oh, time it. I get you now. Kali, teaching young minds every day is what it stands for. Thank you. Um, Christopher Green, think of it creating an item in the space and only sold in that space. Those items can have high value because it's only available in the metaverse. Okay. I, yeah, I, I think it. that's interesting about NFTs is that like it's not a new concept, right? Like if you yeah. played CSGO mm -hmm. or World of Warcraft, like people were building up accounts in World of Warcraft and then going on eBay and like selling those accounts for real money. Mm hmm. So it's it's they they had they weren't interoperable then, yeah. and depending on you ask, most NFTs aren't interoperable now. I know that's the goal, but that's not the right. reality as of today. So I found a fun game of the day in Decentraland. If you want to go, it's Wondermine yeah. at negative twenty seven fifty nine. I'm gonna go there. And so I was like, I don't know if I'm on a different realm, so I don't know if it carried over my experience um, from there or not. But we're about to find out. But you like yeah. you. Let's see if it, oh yeah, it did. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool. You are, it's, why is it so dark here? Weird. Um, is there like time of day in the meta or in Decentraland? Cause it's dark there right now. There might be, I might close this. Uh, Hilda, I definitely need some uh, Google, some goggles. Uh, the recommendation here, unless, unless Facebook or Meta wants to pay me, I'll probably say, the Oculus are the better ones out there right now. Unless you do, you know any better goggles out there that um, you know people use for? I, I don't. I have the the Quest Two here, um, mm -hmm. and it's worked well. I I do find it to be a bit creepy. It somehow <laughs> it automatically Bluetooth connected to my laptop. Um, okay. The microphone and things are on by default, so. I, I guess that's a whole nother conversation about. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> As a product, <laughs> it's a great product. <laughs> nice, nice. So I'm in this wonder mine crafting area. And what you, you do is. What is for that? Uh, negative 2759, I think it really was. And I just, what I found the other day is you, these meteors fall to the ground. And oh, and you mine it. <laughs> and I was just trying to learn a little bit about this space. And you mine it and you get like these coins and these gems and you level up. So it's a fun gamification, right? Mm -hmm. Um you haven't are you finding it at all? Negative twenty seven. Right okay, cool. Yeah. Sorry, teleport. That's okay, it's okay. What what realm are you in again? I'm I'm I went to your realm with uh so Unicorn. Realm Unicorn. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, just just double checking. So from what it, from what it sounds like, I I am a different server or realm. When I think about World of Warcraft and I think about those days, I think, okay, if I get into a different server, I have different characters and different accounts that I need to create or whatever. Um, here it sounds like I jumped over from one realm to the other. Uh, I was in Realm DG, which has the most amount of players, and I warped over to Unicorn where you are. 
and I kept all of my character uh, customization and kept my skills and everything else from the game I was playing. So it looks more just like us where people, where the population can go, depending on if there's a cap or something on each realm, maybe, or they maybe they don't need one, thousands of people in one realm. I'm guessing that's why they have multiple realms. Yeah, it's it's a... load balancing, and we we learned uh -huh. this at our event last year. Okay, um, but you know they, they try to keep one server from having too many people on it because it yeah. can cause the server to crash. So they, okay. they basically evenly distribute the number of people who are on the game at any given time to like as many servers as they need to spin mm -hmm. up. And so because they're doing that, you and I can be in the same physical space, like the coordinates, but if we're yeah. on different server instances, we can't see each other. We learned that the hard way the last year at our event. Yeah, because we had to like like. I don't know if you remember, we had that that uh, career expo set up. Yeah. Like, all of the companies were set up there, but like mm -hmm. all of the attendees were in that space on a different server. And oh, was... oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, you did one like two years ago. Two, what's you? I remember going to one. I remember going to two different ones. Right. Wasn't yeah. wasn't there it the was, first it one? Was February last year when the Super Bowl came here to Tampa Bay. That's right. So there was what. There was um, a big open space, I remember, and it had a big a bunch of signs with advertisements or it was kind of like booths, right? right? It was like right. booths. And then there was a big convention hall that had mm -hmm. the Zoom call on the screen, which I thought was really cool. Yep. Right? Okay. So I do remember that. So if you see, there's, do you see any meteors on the ground? I see the meteors hitting the ground. I don't see you. That's weird. Yeah. It stinks. Maybe it's because the guest account. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe because of um, but like you go up and you mine these meteors and <laughs> it's dumb. But it was uh, honestly what I did the other day was like, where's the most active uh, places in Decentraland? And this was one of them. And obviously it was a game. So I wanted to play it. But right. I can go if I have enough stuff, I can go and uh, upgrade my my stuff. But I but it's a it's a NFT. So. If I have like a hundred gems and twenty thing, I can earn a diamond pickaxe NFT. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty cool. I thought I, what I what I want to what I want to figure out are there, and I think there are. I just don't know how to know where they are. Um, play to earn. I think you mentioned earlier play to earn type. Uh, play to earn NFT or play to earn Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. What's What's out there in that sense of maybe a gamification where I can do things so I don't have to spend real U.S. dollars potentially? You mean here in Decentraland or it, it, generally it, in the space? In the, in, in the metaverse, yeah. I'd say the space anywhere. Um, I don't know specifically in the space. I know there's a company called uh, Bling where mm. what they have you do is play like regular casino games like on your mobile phone. Like you would yeah. like Texas Hold'em or, or whatever, and you yeah. earn Bitcoin. So in, instead of it being like some third, in, in, I don't say some third cryptocurrency to mm -hmm. delegitimize the, the cryptocurrency relative to Bitcoin, but most people don't know about the other ones outside of Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is, is the one that's most popular. So what this company did was basically just allow you to earn that existing coin instead of trying to create some extra crypto. Okay. If that makes okay. sense. Okay. All right. Yeah, that that's that's kind of why I jumped into this this game. One, it's a game, and I'm a gamer. I think mm -hmm. you you are a gamer as well, and right. uh, so it just interested interested me. Um, okay, now so this is good. I, I people were here; they wanted to come in. Um, Christopher Green says, uh, "Oh, that's he's talking about the uh, goggles still." Um, <clears throat> it's funny. This is actually the first time I've probably played a video game and. <laughs> 90 days or more. <laughs> really? So just been busy? Yeah. You know, I, I was saying last week, I, I uh, what was it? I spoke at a, a health um, health summit, an mm -hmm. education summit in New Zealand virtually. And I was saying, yeah. you know, I got into this space because my dream was like, since I was in the fifth grade, was to work in the gaming industry. Yeah. And ironically now, like because I'm trying to build this, this opportunity so that it's accessible to everyone, brands yeah. of all sizes, people of all walks of life. I'm doing so much work that I don't have time to play video games right. or like by the time that I have time and also, you know, and, and I love my kids, but I, I spend a lot of energy with my kids. So by the time mm -hmm. they go to bed, 
I don't even have like the energy to play video games. And I've never thought I would say that, but I, I just, <laughs> just it, it's life, right? It's, it's, it's adulting. <laughs> yeah. I totally get it. Um, I, I'm, but see that let's, let's look at different industries, right? There's mm -hmm. people who are maybe in, I don't know. I don't know. Let's just say medical professions who are trying to help other people be healthy and maybe they don't have time for themselves. Right. Let's, right. let's just say, I think it's a common thing for you in your own industry. I don't know. You're a teacher. You obviously have no time uh, for, <laughs> you have time for kids at your school, but not for your own sometimes, you know, that it, right. I, this is a generalization. I don't know many teachers like that, but let's just say uh, it's a common thing, but I totally get it. 90 days is interesting. You said that when I first thought, because last summer I did a 90 day fast from video games um, with uh, game quitters. And so yeah. I didn't play video games for 90 days and it was actually a, a pur purposeful um, mm -hmm. to fight video game addiction and disorder. But which is fun. We're doing a lot of stuff with them in mental health. Uh, this group called Game Quitters. Um, yeah, they're, they're in the book. Um, Cam, oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, Cam, Cam, Cam and everything Great. he's doing. You know, mm -hmm. I, when I was younger in my career, I was always gung ho about video games. I'm still gung ho about video games, but I, mm -hmm. I think I was blindly a supporter of it, um, mm -hmm. not acknowledging those other, uh, the darker sides of gaming, including gaming addiction. Mm -hmm. and so even when, like, you know, the World Health Organization initially said that gaming addiction was a thing, I, and this was, that was only what, three years ago they did that? Mm -hmm. That was probably even on LinkedIn, you could go find be mocking them or at least when they turned around and said like recommended it as the thing to do during the pandemic i, yeah. I mocked them in the context of making <laughs> that that shift but i also recognize like my son is three like mm -hmm. both my kids love video games but him particular maybe it's because either the his age or or the types of games and i, I do you know age appropriate games it's just like he i can see the the indicators of game addiction in him. So mm. my wife and I actually have like a TV fast in our house right now, like one plug nice. TV because like he just, and and he's learning a ton in games and, mm. and I've had them play learning games, but I, <laughs> I have to balance that as well. So I, I appreciate everything that Cam is doing to bring, you know, to, to close the loop on that, everything he's doing and thank you for supporting him. Mm. It, it's important. We need to have the full conversation on video games, right. not just, it's a, you know, hundred billion dollar plus industry and, and all the good things we need to, to address mm -hmm. and discuss all of it. I agree. I agree. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I definitely feel like a, a very much hypocrite when I go out and I tell schools all across the world and kids and parents, video games are great. And then my own kids, guys, you, you just played last week. You can't play again. <laughs> like you need a little break. I know you're learning, but I, I'm not that, I'm not that bad, but uh, hey, yeah. we only have this in moderation is what I, I teach, what we all teach. And we're in this industry for that reason to help. But uh, yeah, definitely. I try not to be the uh, don't be what I was when I was a kid, because that's just that's just not going to help my my children by saying don't grow up to be like daddy. Like, that's just not yeah. helpful. I've learned that the, the wrong way, the hard way. But mm -hmm. definitely, if I'm going to preach and teach moderation, as we do in the gaming industry, uh, mm -hmm. maybe my kids are. I think I think what happens is living in suburban, uh, you know, white America here in Kansas City Metro, it's very much uh, ba digital babysitting a lot. Um, as I have lots of friends who have their kids on devices all the time um, yeah. because work or whatever it is, especially during the pandemic, obviously uh, needing both parents working Zoom and whatnot, and uh, not having the ability to teach their kids and they're doing distance learning and yada, yada, yada. So that's all I, I, I appreciate it. And I, what, a, what I will say about this is, um, we're, we're still young in this industry, right? This industry is still young. And I think we need, I think we need a lot more years of research as well. And I feel like even the iPhone hasn't been around for 20 years and it takes like 15 years to get good research on things. So maybe we just, we just need more time. Things like the metaverse even, uh, or century land. We need more time to understand it all. Agreed. Agreed hundred percent. So let's go, let's go back in time and then let's go in the future to finish out today. So let's go back in time with, uh, Marcus Howard, young Marcus Howard. Uh, I've heard your story many, many times and you disappeared by the way. I don't know where you went on here. 
I don't see you standing here in front of this this game. It's called like, Wonder Zone. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe this maybe the Central Land wasn't the best idea. It was a good <laughs> idea in theory, but no, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I'm still it's running. A At least everyone's getting a chance yes. to tour the state. Yes, the exactly. Land, free advertising. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, Central Land. We will. I will take uh, two bitcoins, please. <laughs> two bitcoins, uh, please, right. and to pay for my child's education. Um, <laughs> Uh, so let's go. I, I've heard your story many, many times, and I love I love your story, and I love when you hold up the Nintendo Super Mario Three. Uh, I think that's what it is. The um, Nintendo cartridge. Is it Mario, what do you hold up when you usually talk? It's Super, Super Mario Brothers Three. Yeah. Okay. I was right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So my, yeah, my get, parents got that got that mm-hmm. for my brother and my sister and me when when my brother and I were six and, and my sister was five, and we were already playing video games at a young age just because like. We had cousins who played video games. We never had our own console. You know, couldn't play at the house until uh, I was six. And and man, it just it captured like uh, it became like then part of my identity. Uh, everything I wanted to do was around video games because I, I recognized like how novel it was to be able to like experience the same type of 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 different realities you get from like reading books and watching TV and and listening to music, but actually being in control of the experience and, and actually having your decisions impact the experience and, and grow as an extension of that. Um, and then so I also just got fascinated with technology because like, how do you have this, this piece of plastic and have all of this produced on the TV? So started learning everything I could around technology um, in the ninth grade. My parents got us TI-83 plus graphing calculators. We were blessed to be selected through a lottery to get into magnet school. Uh, my brother and I, I guess growing up, were like too smart for our own good. So like if we weren't challenged enough, we would just keep off in class. Yeah. I had a, a teacher who would assign homework to the, I think this might've been algebra, uh, to the class and, and based on whatever I sat in the classroom, she had like a specific pattern for how she would call out who had to answer questions. So I would never do my homework until I sat down in class, uh, like, okay. predict her, her question asking pattern, and then quickly go into the book and like only do that one assignment, like that one question. Uh-huh. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, TI-83 plus graphing. I lost you for a second there, Marcus. That's all right. We, we lost Marcus a little bit. He'll come back. We're here in Decentraland right now. Uh, he's gonna reset. So we're here in Decentraland. I'm playing. I oh my gosh, I made it to the top. So he'll come back in a minute. But thank you guys for being here. Uh, lots of great questions in the chat, and uh, lots of good conversation. Karen's was here. Christopher Green, thank you. Hilda, appreciate you. Uh, Kali, thank you so much. Christopher Turner. Uh, Thank you all. It's been great. Charlie Northup. Um, <laughs> good good stuff. He forgot his password so many times. Luis Diaz, thank you. It's been great to have you all here. Now, right now, we are streaming on multiple platforms. We are on Twitter right now. Hello, Twitter. We are on Facebook. Hello, Facebook. All the friends I know from uh, local as well as uh, growing up. We're on Twitch right now, streaming on Twitch. We are on YouTube, which is good. It's going to save my VOD. And then we're also on LinkedIn, LinkedIn right now as well. And I think I'm back. You're back. Thank you, sir. No All problem. Right. No worries. No worries. Okay. So we were talking about your brother and you, and then you finishing your homework only when you sat down. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, it just wasn't challenged in school mm-hmm. because it, it just where I was with the content. But when I learned that, that – uh, the TI-83 plus graphing calculator, which is strictly supposed to be used for math and science, could become basically a Game Boy. Right. Like, I, I then made the connection that games are apps and apps are made with code. So uh-huh. because I loved the video games so much, I, I wanted to make my own game. My brother and I did. So we started, like, voluntarily learning to code in order exclusively for the purposes of building our own game. Like, literally, my parents bought this, like, 400-page book <laughs> of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for Web 1.0. Like, you... Every night you should spend an hour building a website. Like we wouldn't do any of that. We would like try to spend some of that time playing video games. But as soon as I learned that I could make my own game, I started mm-hmm. teaching myself to code. My brother did too. Um, so okay. fast forward oh. 10 years, 
IT degree with a minor in business management. My brother uh, got a computer science degree, again, for the purposes of, of, of technology by extension of video games. Mm-hmm. And then we wanted to make another game. And yeah. in the process of doing that, we learned that there are over 1.3 million games in the industry, that over 75% of video games are made by independent game developers, which are basically small businesses. Yeah, And that game discovery is still today and has been for decades, the biggest problem in the global gaming industry. So in, in order for us to get a solution or, or even launch our game successfully, yeah, you know, you, you hear about the Minecrafts and the Rocket Leagues, which are technically started as indie games, but you don't hear about all the other games that just die on the vine. Right. So we, okay. we, we built Project MQ to solve that problem and scale it to 40 countries and unfortunately <laughs> couldn't afford to sustain a, a app with users in 40 countries. So we shut it down and pivoted to MetaRena, you know, now into the esports right. space. Okay, let's, let's, I love it. So what, what, tell me about MetaRena. I, I want to learn, I want the audience to learn as well about MetaRena. Excellent, excellent. It's, it's a philosophy that, that my team and I share about like, achieving scale in esports. Um, okay. I believe that there are three major roadblocks to scale. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a limit to the the variety and diversity of people who can participate in esports, either as a competitor or as a professional. I believe there's another bottleneck on the size and diversity of brands who can sponsor esports events and tournaments. I also think that there is a a limit or bottleneck on the diversity and size of games that can participate in esports. You know, you you only hear about 20 games, basically, even like Esports Observer, like the top 10 games of esports. And everyone focuses on those 10 games, excluding basically everything else. Okay, okay, okay. And so where do you where do you want Meta Arena to be in the next five years? We want to get Esports to the point where brands and families and society are using esports the same way they are social media. You know, 20 years ago, no one was using social media if you didn't attend an Ivy League school outside mm-hmm. of like MySpace mm-hmm. and Friendster. Yeah, like, yeah. Just right, right, Facebook. Right. Uh, it just wasn't accessible. So yeah. over the course of the last 20 years, brands have begun to understand and appreciate and prioritize social media, uh, in some cases, mm-hmm. depend on it to grow their businesses. But yeah. today, we don't see that same thing happening in with esports, um, you know, and, and video games more largely. Even though it's you know three billion people playing games, it's just mm-hmm. not being used in society the way it should be. Right. Okay. So that's that's what we want five years from now is to empower like nonprofits to use esports and video games to to achieve their fundraising goals. Mm-hmm. Um, schools to fundamentally rethink education from the perspective of video games and esports, like. How do you use Bullet Drop in Valorant or or Fortnite to oh. teach physics? Yeah, right, 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 right. Things okay. like that. Oh, I yeah. know that video games that teach like like coding and English and chemistry. How can you create like games based education? Then how do you get like brands using video games to improve like company culture, like game nights, right? Mm-hmm. And and externally as a sales channel. If if you as a customer, Bubbo, you want to go get a new headset or a microphone, like, wouldn't it be cool if you could go to Yeti and participate in in their internal tournament and win a new mic instead of having to pay for it? I like it. I like that. Okay. I'm following. I'm digging. Okay. So what, what is it? What's the next step? What's the next step to get to where you want to be in the next five years? With Well, so the book, we just launched the book. Uh-huh. Uh, my team and I, and we spent two years on that. Um, it's been distributed to 17 cities in Florida, 26 states around the U.S., and 17 countries around the world. Okay. Yes. Love it. So that, that's a start. Um, and that's the biggest piece of it, actually, is the education piece. And I learned that from my time in the blockchain space, mm-hmm. is that mm-hmm. like, in order to get people to action esports and gaming, they need to first understand esports and gaming. Sorry, I wandered. <laughs> oh, geez. I wandered over to a theater, <laughs> and there's a guy uh, rapping in the theater, and I was <laughs> the Metaverse Theater. I'm at negative fifty seventy, <laughs> and uh, the dude, it was, guy was singing, and he was dropping the f bomb. So I had to walk out of there real quickly. So I apologize <laughs> to anybody who, who was here. It was a it was a really cool. It was a concert. 
it definitely was like a Travis Scott and Fortnite kind of fun. Uh, yeah. But not yeah. obviously Fortnite, Travis Scott. Um, okay. I, I loved, I want people to know more about your book. I want people to know where they can find it. Uh, anybody that's new to hearing about Marcus Howard and what you do today, I want people to know everything about the book, why you did it, um, how it's helping the industry, what people are saying about it, and where to find it. Excellent. And thank you again for this opportunity. You know, I built this book because while I've been working in, in the industry now for 10 years, um, both in gaming and esports, well, gaming 10, esports 5, and, and I'm now achieving, you know, kind of the dream career that I, I wanted in, as a fifth grader. Yeah. I didn't even know that this was an opportunity until after I graduated from college, right? So like 22, 23. Um, and if I had known that there was an industry that I could either create my own business in or be um, a professional in, mm -hmm. I think that I would have taken my education, K through 12 education more seriously, even my college education more yeah. seriously. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just didn't know. There was not this resource that existed. You know, there was a, there still is a huge stigma uh, you know, against video games, but even, you know, 20 years ago, it was terrible. Um, you know, I had my teacher basically delete the game that we were building on our calculators. My, my trigonometry teacher deleted it off our calculator because she couldn't make the connection between us playing the game and us learning to code. So okay. this book right. is for like, like, you know, teenager me, for me to understand the space, teenager me, for me to communicate that value to my parents and to my teachers. And even like current adult me to communicate the value of gaming and esports to like, uh, colleges, and universities, and businesses that I meet with, you know, mayors and and senators and governors, ecosystem leaders, people who have influence and control of like budgetary decisions. Yeah, who I believe should be leveraging esports and video games to improve like voter registration and and like in-person community service hours and things of that nature like things that benefit society can be achieved through video games but the people who have that decision making authority don't understand and appreciate the value of games and esports to make that happen so that's what the book is for i love it i love it uh i i'm actually dancing in front of a big statue right now uh in the metaverse <laughs> as you were talking um and i got to write something on a on a statue so, and i wrote bubba was here because i'm so a middle schooler. Uh, okay. I love it. I love the book. I know people, we all love the book. I'm happy that I got to be in it. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, there's us fun nonprofits here in the space that, that do very much appreciate being in the book. Uh, all, all of our friends here in the gaming and esports space. And oh my gosh, I think that statue has no bra on. So I'm going to go away from that. This is just a, <laughs> there's, I, <laughs> Welcome to the metaverse. <laughs> Welcome to the metaverse, everyone. All right. I mean, it's, bad. it's a good thing we didn't do this episode in, in Second Life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's art. It's art. Let's just, it's it a is, statue. It is art. art but you know, it's art. Second Life is definitely uh -huh. not safe for work. <laughs> <laughs> so where can, where can, where can purchase go purchase, where can people go purchase the book digitally or paper copies or hardback or, uh, where can people find the book and and tell us the title of the book well so they can look for it the title is innovate gaming and esports and i don't know if if my screen's uh, being broadcast in linkedin but it's available on amazon you can also go to the publisher's website innovationsoftheworld.com which is at the bottom of the book again i don't know if you can see that but uh, there's a gaming and esports book that's this book uh, it, you know i'm blessed that it's received a five star review i've had multiple people tell me that this is their esports Bible. I've had multiple people tell me it's the best book they've ever read. Mm. Um, you know, I've, I've had like everyone enjoy it across all demographics again, which is my vision. So like kids have enjoyed it. Adults have enjoyed it. Gamers have enjoyed it. Non-gamers have enjoyed it. Investors have enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. uh, just everyone. It's, it's doing the thing that I wanted to do was to, again, to introduce this space kind of level set. And then, you know, hopefully people are playing the games. I don't know if you had a chance to, but I, I curated 16 games in there. I wanted it to be like the old school gaming magazines that came with the demos in it. So hopefully people are enjoying and discovering those games as well. I, mean, I did pull it up. I pull up the Amazon link right now and I'll okay. put the chat for everybody. Um, and people are saying in the chat already, yeah, the book is great. Um, so 
I, I I didn't know the thing about the, the about the games. Actually, that's really cool. I have to go back. What I did appreciate is that the NFT book that you made, and I kind of want to find it. If you can send me a link somehow, maybe LinkedIn. The yeah. the you you made the book into a page turning NFT, which I was blown away on how in the heck that happened. First of all. And so maybe if you can, yeah, if you can send that to me, then I will. Uh, yeah, just send you the link uh, okay. in our links in chat so you can share. With okay. And shout out to uh, Callie from the, my publishing team, um, mm -hmm. Global Villages. And I did not create the interactive book myself. He did. Yeah. But it, it was my idea. I just, I didn't have the bandwidth because I was working a full-time job at the time. And it already took two years to do this part-time. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he understood the space. He was already doing some some NFT and crypto investing. So he understood blockchain and, and where the space was going and yeah. aligned with my vision and put everything together. You know, it, it's ironic that you can go buy this book off of OpenSea and I just sent you the link, but yeah. if you don't have the money, you can literally read the entire book cover to cover on OpenSea without spending a single, any ether, right? Uh, it, like for free, because it's, it is the first fully 3D, fully interactive book um, uh, NFT ever to exist. Yeah. And the reason that we created that was that we recognize two reasons. One, we recognize that like older generations prefer like physical books, but younger generations don't necessarily have that same appreciation. Um, the other thing was that the physical book is a hundred bucks and we were trying to create a version of it that again, that was more accessible. So the NFT version is somewhere between 40 to 60 bucks, depending on where the price of, uh, where we are in the, the crypto winner. Uh, but it, it is certainly cheaper than the physical book, and it in still includes all the content. Yeah. I don't know if you, you scan I'm it, in it right now, yeah. The bonus content I couldn't even put in the physical book that you can access through the NFT. Wow. Okay. So the, just clickable things. Yeah. Yeah. So there's uh, there's a course that that I'm launching. Uh, the first module of, of that is in there. As we uh -huh. continue to grow Meta Arena, we're going to start doing some uh, special events that will be open to the public, but like specific pieces of it, you only have access to if you have the NFT. Wow. Okay. So I like that I originally didn't buy the NFT because it was, uh, it was pretty high. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, now I'm finding one that's 22 bucks. So I definitely am going to buy that now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, you know, you, I guess you can thank uh, crypto winner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's looking like a better price for me right now. Um, yeah. But then it'll go up in value, maybe if the crypto market turns around. Um, but yeah, I've got it open right now on screen. I love that I can move it around. And I'm on your page for Meta Arena, you and your twin brother there in the photo. And I just absolutely love. Uh, and I, I went to the page where I'm at, like uh, in the back doors of the nonprofit stuff uh, when I first got in there. I just. Okay, so here's all the games. I didn't. I, maybe I didn't see these eight or ten pages here. Of all the yeah, games. Yeah. So I guess I never paid attention uh, to that. Curate the games from around the world. So a variety so of awesome. genres, a variety of game developers. Um, you know, the idea was that part of my last company, Project MQ, our goal mm -hmm. was to like remove the stigma that all video games are first person shooters or yeah. or mature rated. And nothing against those games. I grew up yeah. playing those games. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I recognize in order to like again address the stigma and, and achieve the scale we need that parents, students, and teachers, businesses need to see there's more to video games than first-person shooters. So that's what, yeah. what that chapter is about, is to introduce like just the variety and then hopefully inspire people to go look into the other 1.3 million games in the space. Yeah. And that's that's one of the things that Metarain is, is focusing on, is how to provide more opportunity for those many other games. Uh, and in that way, create brand-relevant esports experiences. Uh, there's a colleague that... Both of us know, I won't mention his name, but a couple of years ago, he was sharing a story on LinkedIn about how there was a golf company that he was trying to work with yeah. who would not accept his recommendation to have a Fortnite tournament. Like they said, hey, we're a golf company. Like we don't want to do a first person shooter. And so this individual went on to kind of mock that company on LinkedIn. Oh, no. And so I sent the company or the individual a message on LinkedIn and said, hey, I curate games for a living. Like I'm a game scout. Uh, it's one of my my skill sets. Like, here are some amazing games. Why don't you recommend some yeah. golf games for this golf company? And I, I got ghosted or or you know <laughs> dismissed uh, with that approach. But if you think about it, brands 
stay on brand and social media across their entire footprint. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you consider video games as the most engaging form of social media, why right. would you not expect them to want to be on brand there as well? Yeah. And I'm not saying that like a golf uh, course or, or golf club doesn't have people who play first person shooters. They probably do. But if you're trying to get someone to take a risk on video games, why would you start with something that is more of a risk than less of a risk for their brand? They could always grow into first person shooters, but if you start on brand, you give them an, a, a low risk entry point in order to grow from. You set the bar low. Yeah. Love it, man. Well, we're, we are running out of time. I want to make sure people uh, check out more information about you, about what you do, about MetaArena, about uh, your book. Um, we talk about brands and you talk about social media. Uh, where can people find more information about you and MetaArena and your book? Sure. Yeah. So if you go to Amazon.com, you can find the book Innovate Gaming and Esports. Again, you could also go to the website innovationsoftheworld.com, which has a link to the Amazon and to Shopify. Um, I'm obviously here on LinkedIn at Marcus Esports Howard. I'm also on Facebook, Marcus Esports Howard. You can find me on Twitter at there are two of me and I have an Instagram, but I don't even I can't remember the last time I logged into it. <laughs> so I would I would go with LinkedIn or Facebook. My email is Marcus at metarena.gg. And, you know, my DMs are always open. You know, I, I try to be as accessible as possible to at least have an intro conversation so that I can help point people in the right direction. Marcus, this has been great. I'm climbing up a mountain right now uh, where there's a dinosaur. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm way, I've just explored everywhere. I've just been having fun. I don't even know what I'm doing right now, but there is, th this is just incredible. So I've had a ton of fun, man. I've had a ton of fun doing this. Um, I definitely want to keep learning more. And I, you are you are a person that I mention quite often. I don't know if you know that, but I I so something comes up about, about metaverse or crypto or um, even uh, indie games. You are always on the top of my list uh, with many things, and also being a top ten, top LinkedIn voice. And so we we appreciate you in this space. I want you to know that I appreciate you. I think you're amazing, man. And I really appreciate you coming on to the show today. I appreciate the invitation and, and I appreciate uh, the support because I, some of the work that I do is not very popular. Again, in order for, mm. I believe that esports can be a $200 billion industry, but there are, again, as I mentioned, like these, these bottlenecks and, and unfortunately some of those bottlenecks are in place by some of the most well-funded and popular organizations in esports, you know, a perfect example in the scholastic space, we've seen now more accessibility unlocked for like league of legends and potentially other mm -hmm. games that, there wasn't available because of a, a, a intentional bottleneck created by play versus through exclusivity. Yeah. So while that's just one example, I think there are many others around again, uh, price accessibility, uh, device accessibility that we need to remove in order to achieve the full potential. And while part of what I have to do is, is help create those opportunities for scale. I also have to address the bottlenecks. So I appreciate that you appreciate the work that I'm doing. <laughs> Thank you so much, you, you guys. This has been Marcus Hauer. We've been exploring the Central Land and the Metaverse on season two of Invite Sent. You can rewatch this back on any of your streaming platforms. We streamed on Twitter and Twitch and Facebook, YouTube and LinkedIn today, the home of the awesome uh, Marcus Esports Howard, as well as Guild and Ritual Motion. Thank you again, Marcus. I appreciate you, man. You can stick around back in the backstage on that control room and I'll be back shortly with you. Okay, real, real quick, shout out to Ritual oh. Motion. They're also featured in the book. Oh, that's right, that's right, 100%. All right, thanks, man, I'll sketch you in the backside. All right, thanks. All right, everyone, thank you so, so much once again. I had a ton of fun uh, just <laughs> exploring the Central Land. There's so much, if you, saw, if you saw the map, there's all these squares or grids or whatever they are, I'll, I'll learn the terminology better. Uh, there was a ton of stuff and uh, it's just the beginning it's just the beginning you definitely need to learn and get involved and understand it and the best way to do that is to listen to people like marcus howard 
and watch what he's doing. If you don't have alerts or you follow him on LinkedIn, you you need to because he puts out stuff every day. And uh, it's important to stay ahead of this, especially for us in the gaming space. So thank you once again, everyone. I appreciate you all for being here. This has been a ton of fun. Stay amazing. I'll see you next time. Bye. Varsity Esports Foundation. Founded in December 2018, the Varsity Esports Foundation was created by a group of esports professionals. Our mission is to create an inclusive, safe, and aspirational network of gaming communities for all. The Varsity Esports Foundation is a 501c3 organization established to offer financial assistance to schools and to provide a pipeline for students to reach their potential through esports. We have four foundation goals. One, build a network of inclusive gaming communities. Two, create scholarships for students within these communities. Three, ensure a safe environment for all players. And four, promote gaming literacy across the ecosystem. The foundation has funds for a limited amount of assistance to support schools with league fees and or computer equipment. For more information, please visit us at varsityesportsfoundation.org. Varsity Esports Foundation, a pipeline for students to reach their potential through esports. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with, is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, we'd be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. Now, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. I think that's right, Brain.